How you doing? I'm uh, Ryan Evans and I do a layout with uh, Josh Best and uh, Andrew McPherson who you might see in the background. Uh, we've put this uh, Sodor layout together um, over uh, about three or four years um, and it's developed into something similar to this over the last uh, two or three. Um, but we've got a quarry, we've got uh, the mountain, we've got uh, powered Harold uh, who secretly gets his power through the, uh, his, his motion through the, through the, uh, through the mountain. <laughs> Uh, we've got Natford Station, uh, we've got sheds, uh, and right around the other side we've actually got the roundhouse. We've, I guess we've tried to pick some key elements of the island of Sodor that people will recognise. Um, definitely a lot of the trains and the vehicles, um, we've tried to make them, as, I guess, as close to, well, at least the way we remember them from, uh, from the 80s, not so much the CGI days uh, uh, um, these days. Um, but yeah, we've, we've just, I think my first train was in 2012 of Thomas and um, yeah, we've just built up the collection since then. Yeah, so we can then, let's start with the, the mountain yeah, here sorry. and talk about kind of how this is built up here and, and how this plays into the, the whole layout. Sure, the, the, the mountain is probably, probably one of the roughest elements. It was built uh, very, very quickly. You can see a lot of uh, the standard brick in there, but it is built in modules um, and uh, it comes down into about 12 different pieces um, but the main purpose of it was so that we could actually have a tunnel um, have, a, have a hidden section that divided uh, so, so that, well, you know, added interest but also divided our quarry section from the rest of the layout mm -hmm. uh, we've got the aqueduct which again is, is definitely very uh, very Thomas, very British um, could afford to be higher but you know you do what you can. Yeah. Um, and I love the, the slope down to the quarry here. That's very nice. Yeah, we've, we've actually got some rack and pinion trains that actually run up and down it. Um, and they have been so problematic. <laughs> and then one day I actually just used the 9 volt motor that's in Mavis and she made it. I was like, oh my God, why have I bothered? <laughs> it's a lot of over engineering there for no actual benefit. That's the challenges of a, a moving layout like that. It really is, it really is. So we make our way around to this side then, we'll keep coming around and take a closer look at some of the details here. Beautiful. Yeah, well, we um, we try and, uh, I guess, come up with interesting ways to build things so that people actually question them and go, wow, what, how did you do that? Um, like somebody's just walked past and noticed that the roof of the barn is uh, helicopter blades. Uh, the roof of the steamworks is uh, minifigure base plates, um, things that you end up with millions of and right. you don't know what to do with. Um, Yes, we've also got uh, yeah, the uh, windmill, um, which is probably a little bit of a stretch. It doesn't look exactly like the windmill on Sodor, but um, it actually has two levels of motion where it actually rotates the, the, the turret as well as the, the blades. Um, the church, um, not, an, uh, not an original um, uh, roof method, but something different, a point of difference in the, in the layout. Um, and again, modelled a little bit more closely to the one on Sodor. Um, Probably the most interesting part here is, of course, Natford Station. Um, this is built by Josh. Um, he, uh, we tried 20 different ways of making it, and then this is actually the simplest, but it is actually quite effective. Just using one by three uh, plates and uh, 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 one by four by three trans clear um, panels. Um, very, very simple build, but very effective. Right, very iconic kind of train station look there. Yeah. Um, of course, we've got a few of the trains going through, like uh, Henry and Diesel 10. He was a bit of fun. Um, he's uh, uh, seven wide, then goes to six wide on the roof. He was a pain to build. And then I had someone who came up and said, oh, can I order one of those off you? And, yeah, OK. And yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun to try and uh, re-engineer and, and do another one. Um, probably getting back to the buildings, we've got the, the pub over here that's uh, built by Andrew. Um, and don't know if it won. We, we had it as a competition. I can't remember if he... No, I don't think he won, but he, he, he did come in pretty well with it um, within our club. Um, but it's just some lovely details. He's just such a fine, fine builder. But he has also done the pink building and the Sodor Mail Centre as well, um, which, interestingly, has inverted slopes for the roof. So it's actually been... Almost like it's been built upside down, <laughs> which is such an Andrew thing to do. Um, he... Most of the, the steam engines one through to seven, as one through to six of mine, but he built Toby. And he has a rule of, so long as it's attached by one stud, we're good. 
sadly that's not so helpful when you're the one pulling it apart and you don't know how it goes back together. Um, probably as we're going around we've got the, the roundhouse which I did about four years ago and it's probably the single largest item that stays together. It was built modularly um, but then uh, I just ran out of um, I just tried building it into light modules and it just kept on, kept on collapsing. Um, so, you know what, just stuff it, put it in a box and it'll, it'll just be the biggest thing in my uh, Lego storage room. But a uh, bit of fun, again, trying to replicate that, that detail. Um, there's probably a couple of things missing from the, from the Sodor ones from our youth, but um, it still captures that, that vibe. The turntable's motorised. Um, it felt a bit, was a bit boring, so I added the good shed at the front. Uh, Cranky the Crane, actually, he's actually uh, programmable, um, but uh, my old NXT brick uh, that, that runs it, um, for some reason it decided this time it would uh, die, so he's a static... It, it had had enough. <laughs> it, it's, it's saying, come on, I'm like 10 years out, let me go, let me go. Um, so then for all the faces, are those all printed on there? Yeah, a bit, bit of a mix. Actually, probably that's, that's probably what makes our um, trains, I guess, really stand out, is that they... Uh, most of them are stickers, so they're vinyl cut stickers. Okay. Um, so all the pinstriping on the trains, uh, and originally I did all the faces like that too. Um, like Harvey's a new train, his face is actually a sticker. Um, same with Oliver, but um, Edward, James, Gordon, Henry, Thomas, Percy, and I think Toby, we've done printed faces for now. Um, but yeah, most of them are still stickers. So, so they still capture the very simple polygons, um, but they still get that look of hey that's thomas yeah i'm sure you have people coming by and recognizing the different trains and everything yeah that's the best part <laughs> that is so the best part when you get these uh you know seven year old or 12 year old or indeed 41 year old <laughs> kids that come oh my god it's thomas oh my god that's gordon even better when the mums go oh look it's 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 percy no mum that's gordon or that's henry <laughs> you've got to get these things right it's very important absolutely <laughs> Yeah, and well, you also made a bit of an like you, you said Oliver. That's actually duck. Case in point. You know, you've got <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't have Oliver out here. <laughs> Thank you for the so the, the standard also, by here. <laughs> um, yeah. Why is that one missing its roof? Uh, it is charging. So we've actually replaced a lot of the batteries with re rechargeable batteries, um, and. That's part of the reason why we're sort of building some spare yards at the moment, so that doesn't have to be visible. Because <laughs> it does look a little bit like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> you can keep that all hidden away eventually when Correct. you're getting built. Yeah, have a charging station in a shed somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's an excellent layout here, and I'm glad you're able to bring it to the show and set this all up. What is the setup process like for you've got all the different train track and the buildings and everything? How, how does that work for you? Yeah, it, we've actually got a system uh, very much like an Excel spreadsheet where we actually have all of the base plates labeled. Um, like you know, A1, A2, A3, um, and then they just get stored away. Some of them stay in sections of three or sections of two just because of the tracks on them. Um, but we leave certain items on it so that it's very obvious how it goes back together. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good system and it means that we can set it all up in about five hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good work then, and once again, I appreciate you taking us through everything here, so thank you. Pleasure. If you, if you want to, um, some people actually do buy the trains off us, so uh, copies obviously. Um, so yeah, feel free to jump onto legothomas.weebly.com and uh, yeah. You can get to pick up some of this excellent work for yourself. You can, you can. <laughs> we'll make sure to put a link in the description to that as well. So if people want to check that out, just look in the description and go uh, buy some of these fantastic trains. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>